Ratio tables. Today we're going to take a look at what a ratio table is and how to use one and create one to solve a multiplication problem. So what is a ratio table and why is it useful? A ratio table helps organize our multiplication models into a chart that is easy to read. Okay, and why is this important? Well, some multiplication problems are too big to model easily and quickly. For example, 13 times 4 is 13 groups of 4. Well, what does that look like? If you take a look here, here's a picture of 13 groups of 4. To draw that would take a long time. Can you do it? Yes. Um, can you do it easily and quickly? Not so much. So when we come across something like this, 13 times 4, we need or we can use a ratio table to help us solve it without having to model it out. This is what a ratio table looks like when there's nothing in it. <laughs> so no numbers, no labels yet, but this is what the table looks like when it's blank. Okay, so let's see how do we use a ratio table to then fill it out then. So let's take a look at an example here. James buys a Lego sticker book that has six pages. Each page has nine Lego stickers. How many stickers does James have? Okay. So to use a ratio table to solve this problem here, we first need to put some labels on here so we know what we're doing. All right, well, James buys a Lego sticker book that has six pages. So I'm dealing with pages, and on each page, I have some stickers. So my top part of my ratio table here is going to be counting my pages, and the bottom part of my ratio table is gonna be counting how many stickers go on each page. All right, so let's take a look at our equation here. Our equation for this story problem, James buys a Lego sticker book that has six pages. All right, that's the first part of my equation, six. Each page has nine Lego stickers. All right, your keyword here to make this multiplication is each. Each page has nine Lego stickers. And how many stickers does James have that equals? your variable, what you're missing here, S for stickers. So let's start filling this out here. The way the ratio table works here is that we start with the information given to us in the story problem and use that to solve or to find how many stickers James has. So if in one or on one page of um, James's Lego sticker book, he has nine Lego stickers. I know this because it tells me in the story problem here. There's six pages in the Lego sticker book and each page has nine stickers. So one page has nine stickers. So on two pages of that Lego sticker book, that means he would have another nine stickers. But because it's two pages and not just one, that means on two pages he would have 18 stickers total. If we keep going, on three pages, he'd have another nine. So nine plus nine is 18 because we're counting by multiples of nine on each page. So 18 plus nine okay, is 27. All right, so on three pages, there'd be 27 stickers here. I'm gonna keep going here until I'm finished with how many pages I need. On four pages, if I add another nine stickers here, I'd have 36 here. Now, for our class, we've been learning our multiplication songs here. So you could use a song to count by nines, 9, 18, 27, 36. Or if you don't remember the song, then you can add nine to each time here, or add, adding nine to each number here, because each page is another nine stickers added to your total. So on five pages, you would have 45 stickers. Now you don't actually need to keep track of the adding the nines down here unless you do not know your multiples of nine. If you don't, then adding nine to each um, piece here will help you remember what is the next number or the next multiple of nine. All right, and six pages, 54. Okay, now I'm gonna stop 
And the reason why I'm going to stop is because I have counted up to six pages. And James has a Lego sticker book that has six pages. And since I'm counting by pages here and by stickers down here, I'm going to stop here because I have six pages here, which means on six pages altogether, James will have 54 stickers because I've kept track here on my ratio table. So to write my answer, the amount of stickers that James has is 54. And this is how you set up a basic ratio table. Now there's more to it later on, but for the purpose of this lesson, we're just looking at our basic ratio table and keeping track of what we're doing on a chart here on this ratio table instead of with a model. So if we go back and look over here, with this 13 times 4, our ratio table okay, would be counting by 4's. Okay, in one group here, I have 4. In two groups, so that was one group right here, in two groups right here, I would have 8. In three groups, if I had one more group here, I'd have 4, 8, 12. Okay, in four groups, you had another group, so each time you're counting by fours, 4, 8, 12, 16. And you'd keep going until you had 13 groups of four. So instead of modeling it here, you would keep track on a table. So five, you add another group. What's nice about the ratio table is that it starts to keep, if you start keeping track on a table this way with the ratio table, then um, it's easier to keep track of your numbers than trying to draw your models. Now the models are still very important to help you understand what you're doing with your multiplication, but again, when you get to 13 times 4, that's a lot harder to model. Alright, so what happens if we have a multiplication equation here, and we don't have a story problem, like I don't know what I'm counting by, or I'm not sure, am I talking about treasure chests, or am I talking about stickers, or Lego sticker books, what am I counting by? Well, you can still do this problem in a couple different ways. You could make up a story problem to go with it, such as Annalie had four bags of cookies. In each bag, there were eight cookies. How many cookies does Annalie have all together? So you could make up a story problem and use your labels here, or you can look at the equation again and say, okay, what is this equation asking me to do? I say it 4 times 8 equals y, but what does that really mean? Well, this is 4, and what that, the x sign, this multiplication sign, means it's groups of. Okay, so 4 groups of 8 equals my variable or my answer that I don't know yet, y. Okay, so then on my ratio table here, I would use that language to help me solve it. So I could say, well, if I don't have a story problem, I have groups, and what am I counting in? Okay, so this is four groups of eight. I'll write this again here. Groups of eight, which means if I start at one again, and if I have one group, what am I counting by? What is my multiple? Am I counting by fours or am I counting by eights? Well, if this is four groups of eight, that means I am counting by eights. So one group would be eight. So one group of eight is eight. If I continue the pattern, so what would two groups be? Well, if I have two groups of eight, that means I have 16. If I have three groups of eight, I have 24. And if I have one more group of eight, okay, that means I'm counting by eights each time here, I am at 32. So y equals 32. Four groups of eight is thirty two so what right is counting here is what your multiple is what am I counting by because in one there's eight 
So in two groups, there would have to be 16 if you're counting by 8s. 8, 16, 24, 32. So again, in our class, we, are learn we learned our multiplication songs. You can use your multiplication songs to help you keep track of your multiples. But if you don't remember what comes next, adding an 8 each time gets you to another group of 8. 4 times 8 is y. 4 times 8 is 32. Let's try one more example here. 6 times 7 equals h. All right. What does that mean? 6 groups of 7. Okay. So, if I have one group of 7, well, that means I have 7 pieces. If I have two groups of 7, I'm going to have 7 plus 7, or 14. Three groups of 7 is 21. Four groups of 7 would be 28. Five groups of 7 is 35. And six groups of 7 is 42. 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42. Use the song or simply add 7 each time because multiplication is repeated addition. We're just counting by groups of that number. In this case, it happens to be multiples of 7. Let's double check with our model to see how that matches up with um, our ratio table here. So where is the ratio table? Where are these numbers on our model? Well, one group of seven, since I'm counting by six groups of seven for my multiplication equation here, here is one group of seven, and in one group of seven, there would be seven pieces. Right here, one group of seven is seven. So if I have two groups of seven, all together I have seven plus seven is 14 right here. If I have three groups of seven, I have seven plus seven plus seven, which is 21. Three groups of seven is 21. Four groups, I'd add one more seven to what I'm counting here by seven, 14, 21, 28. One more group of seven would be five groups of seven and I'm at 35, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35. And our last group here also has 7, 35 plus 7 is 42. So can you see what I did here? Instead of modeling and counting out with my model like we have been doing, it nicely is organized into this table here called a ratio table and it keeps track of my numbers for me. So that's the beautiful thing of a ratio table. So boys and girls, good luck on using ratio tables to solve your multiplication facts, whether you have, well, multiplication facts and multiplication story problems. So whether you end up having a big problem like 13 times four, or a story problem like this, where you still have to solve, using a ratio table will definitely help you find your answer in a nice, easy, and quick fashion. Good luck.